There's no reason for you to go astray. Don't be leaning to your own understanding. Lean on him and man will all say. We
fill it up and make me own like the woman at the well I will see Fill it up and 
I'm going to have you turn to the book of Ephesians this, this morning. It is morning. And, and before I read what I want to read, I just want you to know that prayers are eternal. You know, when we pray a prayer, you know, uh, those prayers go on forever. You know that? They do. When we pray, they go forever. And, and I'll give an example of that because I remember when I was in Maine, I was, uh, I was in Bible school at the time, and I was helping out an evangelist that came through. And I won't give the whole story because of time. I was helping an evangelist when I was going to be an altar worker at this uh, revival meetings. And, um, and I got lost in the town, and there was this, this older gentleman that I stopped and asked for directions to find the place I needed to go. And the guy got in my car. It was like, I just wanted directions. I didn't want you to come in my car. And he says, I'm going to show you where it is. And I went to, this, to the place where the evangelist was. And uh, he ended up saying, I want to go in with you. And we went in. And he sat through uh, the preaching. And it was time for the altar call. He went up and got saved, okay? And when he got saved at the altar, all the people in the church, all the people in there, a lot of them, okay, they all came over to lay hands on him that he'd received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the same time. And, and, and you know those people that came, they were all crying? And you know why they were crying? Because... His wife was a part of that church group, and they used to pray for her, that husband's salvation for years and years and years, and she was dead now. She was with the Lord, and her prayers went continued even after she died, okay? And those people in that church saw the answer to that prayer, and that's why they were crying like that. So, you know, our prayers, when we pray, I feel they're eternal. You know, sometimes we're not going to see the answer to our prayers here on this earth, okay? Well, now, I'm in Ephesians, and Paul prays a prayer here. And believe it or not, he's praying for us. Back then, he prayed for us, <laughs> okay? And this is a prayer, I feel, that's like an eternal prayer that God, you know, when he prayed, he had us in mind. And how I know that, okay? I'm going to show you a verse before I read the whole thing. Verse 21 says, this is Ephesians 3.21. At the end of his prayer, he says, To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generation forever and ever. See? To the church, that's the present church that he was in, which is not just the Ephesian church. The church is like a living organism, right? It's not dependent on a building. You know who the church is? All those who accept Christ in their life. And we become saints and we become a part of the family of God, don't we? Well, he was talking about his church, but to, for the generations to come. Guess what? We're the generations to come. So because of that, I know this prayer is for us. And when he prayed that prayer, he prayed this for us. And... So let's see what he did to pray for us, okay? And I, I'm going to pray first before I read the word. And uh, Father, 
I, I want to thank you uh, for this day. I want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you for your many, many, many blessings. And, and God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you that Paul prayed for us. I thank you for that. And, and God, I pray that those prayers that he prayed for us will uh, bear fruit in our lives. Let it bear fruit, God. And help me, Lord, as I uh, uh, read about this prayer that Paul said, wrote down while he was in prison. God, I, I pray that our, your Holy Spirit will just give us a, a deeper understanding of what you want to do in our life. And I just ask you all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You know, Paul prayed all kinds of times in prison. Actually, not all kinds. Four times. Okay? And it was all the prison epistles. Imagine that. Now, the prison epistles are Ephesians, Colossians, uh, Philippians, and Philemon or Philemon, okay? Those are the three, four places Paul was in prison. But the, the times he prayed for us, it was when he was in prison. Now, you know, when we're in our worst place, and, you know, he, he built up a prayer closet in his, in his, the prison, because he knew that the walls, okay, he knew that those walls weren't going to stop those prayers. And now he's going to pray. Now I'm going to read the prayer. It's starting with, no, so, so in case you're taking notes, two of the prayers are in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. And then now we're looking at Ephesians 3. And he also said a prayer in Philippians chapter 1. And he also said a prayer in Colossians. Okay? And it was for us, the saints. And uh, that specific church as well. Now, we're looking at the second prayer that Paul prayed in the book of Ephesians. And here we go. And I want to look. And I, verse 14, and I'm going to read right down to 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. He would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit, in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, and height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. That's a beautiful prayer. And I talked about this prayer before. It's so beautiful. I think it's good to talk about it more than once. <laughs> I get a lot out of this. This is an awesome prayer. And the thing is, at the beginning, verses 14 and 15, you know, I want to look at verse 14 first. I'm going to break this down, this prayer. 
And he says, for this reason, when usually you see that, it's what is said before that, okay? And he was talking about God's abundant grace and the mysteries of the gospel and how all the blessings that God bestows upon us and how Paul was suffering for their sake so they can hear all of that. So that's what he was talking about before that. So he says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. Now, I want to talk a little bit about bowing knees. Do you know it's not the position that we're in that matters when we pray? Some of us think so. Well, there's uh, places in the Bible that talk about that. And uh, I, I'm going to just read them. You don't have to go there, but I'm going to read them. Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the assembly. So he stood up, okay? And here's another place. And uh, 16. David the king went and sat before the Lord. So he sat before the Lord. And then Jesus, okay, this is what he did. This is in the garden when he prayed. And when he went a little beyond them and fell on his face, prayed, saying. So kneeling isn't the thing. The position isn't the thing. The Bible shows there's all kinds of different people that did different things when they went before the Lord. What really matters, okay, what really matters is when we bow our hearts and our will to God when we pray. That's what matters. And I really think that's what Paul was doing. Because realistically, if he was in prison, and a lot of times the guards are chained to him, can you imagine how awkward that would be? Okay, let's, let's all get down and pray. You know, there's a guard. You know what I mean? Who knows what it was like for Paul? But I, I really think, you know, it has to do with our hearts and our wills. we got to bow it before the Lord. That will help us get an effective prayer. And then in verse 15, he talks about every family in heaven and on earth. So, you know, the family of God, like I was talking about earlier, you know what? There's some people that have gone to be with the Lord already. They're still a part of this family. There's some with Jesus right now, and there's some here on earth. We're all part of the same family, even though they received their reward and we didn't, right? And really what makes us a family is what Jesus did. And we're, the, we're adopted sons and daughters, right? And we can call our father Abba, Father, can't we now? So we're all part of that family of God, every one of us. So, and then, then he ends up in this prayer, okay? In this prayer, he, he, he's going to put four requests for us. And when he prayed for all of us and the Ephesian church, he, he made four requests, and the thing about those requests, it's like a staircase, okay? You got to step on the first step before you go to the second step, and you got to get on the second step before you get to the third step, and then finally you're at the fourth step. So it kind of builds on itself, and that's how it needs to be with us. See, because when Paul prayed this prayer, he wasn't really praying to the outward side of a man, he was dealing with the inward side of the man, okay? Now, we have an inner man, too. So when we got born again, when we became a Christian, when the Holy Spirit breathed life into us and we became a new creation in Christ Jesus, okay, that spiritual man is alive in us. And that spiritual man can see, it can hear, it can taste. Remember the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good, right? 
They can feel. They can do all those things. That spiritual man. It also needs to be fed. We have to feed our spiritual man. The word of God. The bread of life. Right? And drink the living water. Right? The spiritual man. But these steps. And I want to talk about these steps. The first step. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. And his riches are amazing. Right? It, it's fathomless, his glory. Okay? But he wants to give us out of his glory. Okay? He wants to strengthen us with the power of his spirit in that inner man. You know, life is hard, ain't it? Isn't it hard? And, and, you know, we need the Holy Spirit, you know, to strengthen us, don't we? The, you know, we got to be strengthened, and really, to empower us and increase us in vigor. That's what it is, okay? And God wants to empower us like that. He wants to empower us with the Holy Spirit so that we're so full of vigor in the Lord, okay, that that nothing is going to get in our way. Nothing in this world is going to get in our way. You know, if we're strong in the inner man, it doesn't matter what happens in the outward man side. You know what I'm saying? The outward man is going to follow. That's what's going to happen. The things of this world, right, it's going to follow. If we're strong on the inside... You know, the, everything else is going to follow on the outside in our life. So we need the fullness and the power of the Holy Spirit. We do. You know, what a great thing to be asking, you know, uh, Paul praying that all of us will be strengthened with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but we leak, don't we? Don't we leak? Because we're human. And because of that, we need more of his power so we can be overcomers in this world, right? We sang about that today, didn't we? We're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. But what makes us a conqueror? The Holy Spirit and what Jesus did on the cross for us, right? And the Holy Spirit just, he wants to enrich us to a point that, you know what? We're going to have victory in our life. You know, he'll even give us joy in the midst of a circumstance that doesn't, isn't very joyful. You know what I mean? But it's the Holy Spirit that's going to quicken us like that. He wants to get, he wants us to walk in victory. He really does. But it's the Holy Spirit that's going to strengthen our inner man. And I know my inner man, it falters in a lot of ways at times. And I find when I pray, and especially with the, you know, the, I got blessed with the gifts of uh, praying in the Spirit. You know, the gift of tongues. You know, when I pray in the Spirit, it builds me up on the inside. It builds me up. And, and it makes me strong on the inside. I could go in my prayer closet and, and, you know, I could go in there defeated. And when I walk out, I could feel, man, I'm ready. I'm ready to face the lion and the bear just like, just like David did, right? But you know what? We don't have to wait for our prayer closet. We need to be praying on all occasions at all times and keep that attitude of prayer in our life because the Holy Spirit wants to strengthen us. Amen? You know, I'm going to read a verse. It says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, but though the outward man is decaying, our inner man is being renewed day by day. And how are we getting renewed? By the Holy Spirit. It renews us. It refreshes us. 
You know, I could feel like I had a really bad day and I made a lot of mistakes. And uh, I'm so glad that God has the reset button for me. You know what I mean? And, and you know, in the natural world, getting up in the morning on a fresh day, sometimes it's really good, huh? It's a new day. You know, I had a bad day at work yesterday. Things didn't go so well. But I'm going punch in today, and it's a new day today. But, you know, that's how it is with God. He renews us. He refreshes us. And you've heard me say that before, too. You know, uh, the older I get, the more I realize how I wear out as the day goes by. And I'm starting to do more things that I need to do that are important when I'm fresh. Right? Right? But the Holy Spirit will renew us. He wants to. And Paul prayed that prayer. Then he prayed the second thing. The second thing he prayed is he wants us to have a deeper experience of God's love. A deeper. God wants us to go deeper. He wants us to go deeper. And it's with his love. And he talks about this. So that Christ, and it's in three points, really. Three points in that one point. And verse 17 covers them all, okay? It says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts. Oh, that's one of the points. That Christ, through faith, that Christ will dwell in our hearts. And I know Rod was singing a song about amazing grace. And one time it was just a song, but now it's an experience. It was talking about that in that song. See, God, see, through faith, Christ wants to dwell in our hearts, okay? We've got to make room for him by faith. He wants to dwell in us. You know, he wants to settle down and be at home in us. That's what he wants. But we've got to invite him in by faith. And I'll give you an example of that. In the uh, Old Testament, when Abraham uh, greeted those three visitors, you remember that? In, uh, I think it's Genesis chapter 18. There were three visitors that came. And Abraham opened his home to them. Well, one of them was actually Jesus, the incarnate, I mean, the, the pre-incarnate Christ, okay? He was one of those three visitors. The other two were angels, okay? And he let them in his house, and they dwelt and they ate there and spent time with Abraham. But you know what? When it was time to go to Sodom and Gomorrah, the two angels went, but Jesus didn't. See, God wants to dwell in us, and he wants to feel at home in us. And we need to set up an environment that he's at home with us. You know what I mean? But being, you know, so Jesus, and it's by faith. And, and a lot of times, see, it's not by our works, right, that Jesus is going to dwell in us and feel at home with us. It's the work that he did that allows him to want to be able to do that, right? Because we all fall short of the glory of God, don't we? And he died on the cross for our sins, right? We're not going to get perfect before he'll feel at home in us, but he'll feel at home if we're dependent on the cross and what he did for us on the cross. And we practice forgiveness and repentance, right? Amen. I always need a fresh touch of the Lord. How about you? And then it says that you being rooted, that's the second thing. And the third thing is grounded in what? Love. So you got two terms there, roots and grounded. It's basically talking about a foundation, okay? We're going to talk about rooted. Roots make us stable. 
That's what it does. They run deep in the soil. And if there's a drought, guess what? We're still going to survive. You know, the roots that go deep in the Lord, okay? Uh, we're going to survive whatever it is that we face in our life. See, because it's the love of God that's going to sustain us. You know what I mean? And we got to get rooted in that love. Because there's a lot of things that go the opposite of that love in our life, right? But if we're rooted in the love of Christ and those roots run deep, you know, those roots, those roots give us nourishment and stability. We draw from Jesus, you know, the life source in those roots. And a lot of times roots will spread out. You know, I put my tomatoes out there and... Uh, you know, I, I, you would think that the roots would go down, but no, they like to spread out. They like the heat, <laughs> you know, and they like to draw the nutrients from all around. So when I do some weeding, I find roots of my tomato plants pretty far away from the stem, okay? And that's how that works because they're drawing all them nutrients. And it's sa same with us. God wants us to be rooted this way and also deep, so that nothing will affect us. Matter of fact, the parable of the sower talks about that. You know, people who uh, don't have much root, when trials and persecution come their way, they're going to fall away, right? See, roots matter, especially when the storms of life come. Same thing with foundations. Same thing with that. You know, that's a building term. And, you know, and uh, remember Jesus? I gave a sermon a little while ago about uh, Jesus talked about two houses. One was built on the sand and one was built on the rock, right? And then we talked all about this right here, about how important to have a good foundation and to have our foundation run deep, Okay. Because you know what? We can't go high unless we run deep. We can't go to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times those trials will stop us from going to the next level. It will. You know, and I really believe the trials that come in our life is just to see what we're really made of in Christ Jesus. You know what I mean? And Paul, his desire is that Christ would dwell in them by faith and that they would be rooted and grounded in love. And, you know, uh, in, in my personal life, uh, you know, I, I can look back in my life and I can see a lot of times that I didn't, you know, I got hurt or I got offended or all the things that might have happened in my life, okay? And really what I wasn't seeing was the love of Christ in a certain situation and if I wasn't rooted and grounded and practiced forgiveness, okay, I probably wouldn't be in this church right now. Because I find that non-Christians, okay, sometimes can be more loving than Christians. And it should be the other way around. We should be displaying the love of Christ, right? You know what I'm saying? And it hurts real bad when a Christian hurts a Christian. Boy, that hurts, don't it? But if we're rooted and grounded in Christ, okay? If we're rooted and grounded in Christ, when those storms come in our life, okay, we're going to stay strong in the Lord. You know what I mean? We get our source from Jesus. You know what I mean? And, and it's that love that keeps us going, right? You know? Like, loving my enemy, loving those that hurt me. If somebody wants my tunic, give him your cloak too, right? If they strike you in the face, give them the other cheek, right? All those things. But we can't do that without Jesus. And we can't do that unless we're grounded in his love. And we're grounded in Christ, right? That's a beautiful thing. And, you know, Paul was practicing that while he was in jail, <laughs> wasn't he? 
You know, it's really funny because a lot of marriages, a lot of weddings, the weddings that I did, a lot of people want to hear Second Corinthians, I mean, First Corinthians 13, right? The love chapter. And they like to have that in their ceremony. And it's funny how Paul got inspired by the Holy Spirit to tell us what love was. And he wasn't treated very lovingly. But yet, he could tell us what love was. And that's the Holy Spirit that helped him do that. You know why? Because the Spirit was strengthening his inner man. <laughs> See, he was building upon himself. Then let's look at the next thing, that you may comprehend. That's the, this is the third point, you know, that you might comprehend with all the saints. Am I talking to saints today? Or do we have to wait a certain amount of years before someone becomes a saint? Or you have to prove to me that uh, you did a couple miracles or whatever it is, okay? No, we're saints because of what Jesus did for us. And you know what? The truth be known, we're all miracles. There's a miracle right there, okay? And, and you know what? We're saints. And we don't have to wait to be called one. We are one. It's because of what Jesus did for us. And he says, you know, that the, all the saints will comprehend what is the breadth, length, and height, and depth. And I want to break that down a little bit. The breadth really, of his love, okay? That's what it's talking about. The breath of God's love. Let's talk about that a minute, that we understand what that means. You know how wide God's love is? He loves everybody. All people, all ages, all nations, no matter what your skin color is, every sinner who's far from God, he loves them too. In God's eyes, we're all precious to him in this world. And we need to understand that kind of love. And, and get a deeper understanding of that love. Because when we do, we'll be more effective for Jesus. We will. For the sake of the gospel, right? Right? And it talks about length. And this one here says breath, okay? Same thing as length. That has to do with our walk. You know, this way. It's the road we travel in life. Where my feet and circumstances bring me. Think about your life. And think about the love of God in your journey through your life. He was there where you were in the past. Even though we didn't realize it. And I can think of sometimes I wasn't born again. I didn't know the Lord. But boy, there's times when I look back in my life, okay? <sighs> the love of God was there for me. He was there for me. And I didn't know it. I didn't know it. And he's with me now, and he's going to be with me, and he's already waiting for me in the future. In my walk with God, his love's going to be there for me. You know, how awesome is that, right? His love never runs out. How many times must I forgive? Remember Peter said that? Seventy times seven. And if we're counting, we're not forgiving. It outmeasures human sin. That, right? Love covers a multitude of sin. Gee, God is long-suffering. He's faithful to us. You know, I, I think about all the times I failed him. But he kept loving me. 
His mercy is new every morning. Then the height, how high that love is. Higher than any worldly place. If we overcome, we sit in heavenly places. And really, technically, we're there already. And, and spiritually, we are, okay? And the devil's under our feet. When we're sitting in heavenly places with Jesus, all those things are under our feet. We have the victory. Because there's nothing higher than God and his love. You know, beyond any foe. And the foe that wants to deprive us from that love. Paul talks about that, right? Neither death, nor angels or demons, right, shall separate me from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. That height of his love, it goes beyond sorrow, pain, death, and sickness. It goes beyond that. Hallelujah. The depth of his love. Deeper than our view of grace could be. Whatever you're thinking grace is, it's deeper than that. Stooping to the lowest condition to relieve and save those who sunk in the depths of their sin. Stooping to the lowest parts of sin and condemnation to save us. You can't backslide enough for God to forgive you. You know, the psalmist said, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I hide? If I build my bed, you know, you are in the heavens, you are on the mountains, but if I build my bed in hell, you are there. You know, we can't run from God. And his love, his love is reaching out to those ultimate places, no matter how high or low or wide or long, and God wants us to be full of that understanding of what that means. You know what? The truth be known, we don't really comprehend that. We don't comprehend that kind of love. You know, it's one thing to comprehend, right? That's head knowledge. But it's another thing, like where it says it. It says, and to know the love, verse 19, that surpasses knowledge. See, knowledge will only get you so far. But to have that understanding of that love. And God wants us to have that understanding of the love that God has for us. He wants us to have that understanding. It's going to change our whole life more and more. It's going to help us to overlook those things that hurt us sometimes. You know what I mean? You know, God wants us to get that understanding of his heart. That's what it is. That Paul said, I want you to comprehend who God really is. I know it's going to change the way we treat each other. That's for sure. Won't it? Or even how we see ourselves. When we see ourselves the way God sees us, or the way he sees our brother or our neighbor, or our boss. It's going to change the way we do things. Won't it? And boy, I'll tell you, I need more of that. Because boy, I fall short. I fall short. And Paul, I want to thank you for praying that prayer for me. 
<laughs> it's like, thank you, Lord, right? Because I want to take on the nature of Jesus in my life. I really do. And, and then the fourth thing is that you may be filled up to the fourth fullness of God. See, that's the top step. And, and this is what I wrote about that in my notes. He wants you to be full. In order to be full, you have to empty yourself. We can only get as much as Jesus and his love, right? The less of us that we are. Jesus needs, we need to decrease, right? So Christ can increase. That's what John the Apostle said. I mean, John the Baptist said that, right? And we got to empty ourselves out and our sinful nature and our flesh. And we got to be an open vessel to be full. That's, that's how we get full. We have to empty ourselves first. Full of his love, his presence, his power. See, God wants us to be full of the spirit. Full of his word. Full of his promises. See, we can't have victory when we run on empty. We can't feed others when we're running on empty. It's like a blind person leading the blind, right? I got to be full of God in order to help someone find God. Right? Because usually the people I want to talk to about God, they're hostile towards me. But how can I show them the love of God? See, without the Holy Spirit strengthening my inner man, without Christ dwelling in me, without being rooted and grounded, right? See how it builds? Without, what's the next one? Comprehending that love. And, and when those things are there, okay, I'm going to be full enough to love those that are hostile and hostile towards Jesus. See, it's not me. It's Jesus. And you know, when I see my flesh rise up in my life because I got frustrated about something, how many of us know we can't run on frustration? You know, when we get to frustration level, guess what? We just lost the battle because our flesh takes over. And then we say and do things that we regret, right? I know I wore the T-shirt <laughs> all kinds of times. And I learn that when I'm in frustration level, I'm not effective for Christ. I need more of Jesus in my life. How about you? Because God wants me to minister. Once I'm full, he wants me to minister with the overflow. You know what I mean? It's that overflow, the overflow of Jesus that's really going to change people's lives. I need the overflow of Jesus in my life. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. Change my heart, God. Those songs today were so appropriate to what I'm talking about that we sang. Because God wants us full. Because we're living in a world with people living on empty and in want and don't even know what love is, right? I know we're getting challenged on Wednesday nights, huh, Pauline? To see how loving we really are. <laughs> oh, boy, right? 
God sent a bunch of little chisels our way. Oh, boy. And you know what Jesus said? He said, they will know you are my disciples by your love for one another. Hallelujah. Then look at verse 20. After reading all this, I almost feel like, man, I fall short of this whole thing. How about you? I'm kind of leaving church a little discouraged, okay? Man, I, I really, okay, I looked in the mirror. I know I got, you got work to do in me, Lord, in this prayer. But verse 20 is really encouraging to me. Now to him, which is God, right, who is able to do exceedingly above and beyond all we ask or think according to the power of God that works within us. Wow. So he could do all, above all, abundantly above all, exceedingly above abundantly above all, right? I feel short, but you know what? God is able to meet that need that we have need to have to love like that it goes beyond our asking it goes beyond our thinking he gives us power to be able to do that Whew. wow that's an awesome prayer ain't it I could see why the Holy Spirit made sure that was in our Bibles. You know, when we fail each other or we fail God, God's love is bigger than that. <laughs> I'm so glad, right? Isn't that good to know? And I told you last week, if I haven't failed you yet, I will as a pastor. Okay? And maybe if that happens, maybe God's testing you to see how rooted and grounded you are in his love. I'm going to say a prayer. Father, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for the word of God. I want to thank you for this prayer, and this prayer is eternal. I'm so encouraged to know that Paul prayed for me. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. And Lord, I want to live up to that prayer, God. I want that prayer to manifest itself in me. And God, thank you, God, for this encouragement that you're more than able above and, lead, above and beyond all we could ask or think. Oh, God, you're able to do that for us because of the power that you have given us and that lives in us. And God, let us live up to our potential. Let us live up to the potential that Paul prayed for in our life. We want a deeper understanding of your love, Lord, so that we could be more effective to those around us. And help us, Lord, help us to take on that love in our lives. And bless your people, Lord. Bless this time. And uh, God, help us to think on the things we heard today. Help us to meditate on that. And help us to reach out to others with the overflow that you give us, God. And I ask you all these things 
in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Have a good week. Be blessed.